Right then, Royal Interceptor. Oh, hello. Well, that's no good. I feel like slashing. Intercept 650. Test ride. Take two. What a lovely day. So. This is the Royal Interceptor 650 Twin. First of all, just as soon as I sat on it, this bike feels great. It feels like the bikes you used to ride when you first got into bikes. And actually, I'm surprised, actually, stop saying actually. It feels great. It's really smooth. For a twin, it's got that. It's a 270 degree crank, so it's got that twin feel, but actually, it's really smooth. And a beautiful day, what a day for test riding the bike! It's perfect because look at this weather, but it's actually freezing cold, it's only about six degrees. But we'll take that, you know. I love this bike already. It's the same as if you if you watch if you've watched YouTube videos of people test riding it, test riding the interceptor, then you'd be aware, but it's absolutely true. I've got a smile on my face already. Because it's not, you know, some of the bigger nakeds you're not hanging on for dear life it's not scary it's just a, it, it's just a really nice place to be just just sitting here just pootling along you know it's uh, and there's lots of people say oh you need you know there's quite a lot of opinion with people saying you need to uprate the suspension you need to change this you need to change that and actually that that's probably true if, if you're gonna push it but I think if you're like me and you just like to get out and just you know just bumble around the country lanes in the nice weather and get out and do a bit of, bit of biking then I think it's perfect I, mean, I think it's great I, don't, I just uh, I just wish I knew where I was going so I had a route planned out but the route I planned out, which is the way I came in to pick the bike up, is thick fog. So I've come this way on the, on their suggestion, but I don't really know where I'm going. Flood? I want a flood. I don't know. Lovely roads though. Just as good as the route I was, I'd chosen, but you know, you can imagine just tootling off, and I think you know you could go as far as you wanted to on this bike. You know, well, I'll let you know in about 40 minutes how my backside's feeling. But so far, you know, I think if you wanted to go off for the weekend somewhere, chuck a tent on the back, and uh, you know. I think you'd be great. None of these places say the place they told me to go, <laughs> go to. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. It's more than just, you know, yes, it, it, it's on a budget. It's a budget bike. It doesn't feel particularly like a budget bike. And I think their work ethic, if you look at, you know, some people have sort of been quite harsh about, you know, the hand painting and all that sort of stuff. But that's a proper skill, and that's proper people who are building motorcycles rather than just some sort of factory pumping out machines, you know. And I think there's something to be said for that. Look at this scenery. 
This is where you want to ride a quintessentially British motorcycle, brackets made in India. Um, but, you know, love it. Sun's out. Roads are dry for a change. You know, and, and, and love it. I'm loving this bike already. You know, because you're not going to really, in reality, you're not going to be going faster than this unless you're a bit of a nutter. Um, in which case, you know, buy a Super Duke car. But <laughs> if you want, you know, and I'm guessing that this is aimed at sort of middle to middleweight Triumph owners, you know, Bonnevilles and uh, Street Twins, that sort of stuff. All those sort of slightly retro XSR 700. Which is, which again is a great bike. It, it just depends. It depends what you want. You know, if you want modern, buy modern. If you want retro, if you want retro, with a bit of heritage and, and a bit of feel to it, a bit of character, then I, you can't go you can't go wrong with this, can you? Surely. You know, under six thousand pounds on the road. Less if less if you go for one of the basic paint models. Um, you know, you're looking just over five and a half grand. Brand new. <laughs> um, and it sounds amazing. I can understand why people want to put, you know, slightly louder pipes on. If you're just a normal person like me and not, not a test rider. So, you know, not, not a bike journalist, not a test rider who's complaining that you know when you lean it over to 47 degrees it hasn't quite got enough damping to bring you out on, at, of the corner at speed. Are we all doing that really? You know, and that's fine for me. I can't think of a better second bike to have. You get the big bike, the big adventure bike, you know you can lap, slap your luggage on it, go away for a week, go touring Scotland. I think for everything else for jumping on it and going to the pub jumping on it and going to your families or your friends for the you know just perfect what a perfect bike for that I'm loving it I thought my problem might be that I might be a little bit too big for this bike now let's have a look at these places where are we going here Bishop Lydiard to the left North Bethel ah so somewhere I'd gone straight, or I should have gone left, obviously. So let's go this way. Up, up and up and up. As I was saying before, we were so rudely interrupted by me going the wrong way. Looking for a second bike. I mean... For commuting, I think it would be great. You know, for weekends out, great. Down to the coast, great. Looks great, feels great, sounds great. Look at this. Look where we live. What an amazing place. Thank you GV Bikes of Taunton for sending me to discover this place. This is amazing. Stunning, absolutely stunning. And perfect bike test riding we stop looking at the scenery and watch the road. Look at that. Look at that. I don't know if the camera got around far enough to see it, but anyway, I can't remember what I was saying now. This is what you want. And essentially a British bike, British roads in the British summer. And you can tell it's the British summer because it's six degrees. So, but it's dry and the sun's out and you know, what better place? Get your kit on, get out and enjoy yourself on a Royal Enfield and, and that's what I'm doing and I'm still smiling. It's amazing. It's brilliant. I love it. Buy one. Everybody. Everybody buy one. We should really find somewhere to pull over so we can have a look at it. Yeah, back brakes all right. It's not it's it's not massive, but brakes are okay there. It's got Bybury brakes, which are the, like the the Indian subsidiary of Brembo. 
So, uh, all right, front brake's good. The front brake is good. Back brake's a bit vague, but it's enough, you know, with the front brake, you know. We're not stunt riders, are we? So, you know. Well, I'm not. Beautiful. And these, I mean, these roads are quite bumpy, so the suspension seems, you know, it's taking it all right. Nice house if you can afford it. After riding it for a while and sort of settling into being it, you can under you can see people going, yeah, well maybe it's like uprated shocks, uprated springs maybe you might you know would might help it to be a stiffer, you know, more positive machine, but that's not to say that it isn't perfectly rideable as it is because it is you know it's, it's 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 i'm loving it sun's out smile on my face don't know where i'm going i'll keep going this way <laughs> and uh you know this isn't the problem going this way and going back won't be a pro the problem will be that I'm not really sure where the dealership is if I come into town from a weird place. So that will be the interesting part, but I'm sure we'll get there, we'll find it. So uh, we'll just, there's a massive cricket pitch next to it, so we'll just follow the floodlights to the cricket stadium. You say cricket stadium, you say cricket ground, I don't know. Who knows? Who cares? I don't. Anyway. Speed here. The clutch is super light, so I think it's got a, a is it clutch assist or slipper or whatever they call it these days. But the clutch is super light, so I've got a big naked bike. Uh, I've got an XGR 1200 as well, and that is a little bit scary when you're riding it around because it's just massive. Um, and I think the, the advantage of these are it, this with the 650 is that you no, know, it's light. It's light and you know you can slap you know slap it about you know it's light so you feel completely in control of it because it's light so you know you're riding it it's not riding you and and i think because you can you know you can ride it full on without thinking that you're gonna die so you know and and, and feeling that you're in control of it all the time it, it's amazing it, it's uh, yeah it's good oh look uh, see this is the road that I should have come out on let's go this way we'll go up there for a bit see what happens it's got a six-speed gearbox which is nice but you know now, oh, I think I found six. That's the first time I found six. You know, that's popping along at 60 with no effort whatsoever. No effort. So, it's lovely. I love it. Hell Farm, make a note of that one. Just in case. Look at this weather. You couldn't have asked for a better day, could you really? But I love it. It's, it's just smooth and it sounds great and I think all the um, the modifications and improvements that people are doing I think they're great don't get me wrong I think they're great and I think yes I agree I think they would make a difference but I don't think by any means they're a necessity beautiful beautiful what a lovely lovely day and a lovely lovely bike I'm a little bit taken by this I have to say Turn around soon, and we're going to be at the seaside. <laughs> Let's go to the seaside. I think they'd be a bit worried if I wasn't back by the time they close. I know it's a retro bike, but I don't think we should be going to the retro coast 
Um, that'd be too much, wouldn't it? Fish and chips, sunshine, fish and chips, Royal Enfield. Bloody marvellous. <laughs> love it out in the countryside yeah so this is what you need to do the weather's coming it's going to be like this all summer get yourself down to your dealership get yourself a Royal Enfield get out and do some biking that's what I say look at these roads there's no one out no nod from him uh, see there's the non nodding Harley riders we're too cool to nod because I've got a Harley well, I've got a Royal Enfield, and we don't care. See if we can find this dealership. The long lost dealership. I think this bike sounds great with the standard pipes, but I can understand that you might want to just make the most of that 270 degree crank twin sound because it does burble. And I think you know, you get the little pop and burble on the overrun if you had fleer, fleer? freer flowing pipes on. But I think it's great. I love it. I love it. I love this bike. And I think people are absolutely right. I think with a few tweaks to make it, you know, perfect for you, whether that's pipes, brakes, suspension, mirrors, you know, I, I, I think it's the perfect bike to it's no nonsense biking says so you know maintenance is going to be low 60 miles to the gallon I mean you know I'm loving it and I love the Enfield you know the Royal Enfield ethic they're, they're trying to build motorcycles for people and I think a lot of people are quick to jump on that oh it's made in India so it's going to be in a shed somewhere with old rubbish tools being hammered together you know by children but actually I think they're actually loving making motorcycles and I think they're doing something right because that's why it's the UK's top selling bike you know and I think if it was rubbish they wouldn't be selling them and selling them in bulk I think what you could I think you could get on you could test ride other bikes for example so and it's a 650. You could test drive a Triumph Trident and go, oh my god, this bike's amazing. You know, it's so much so much better than the Enfield. But I think the word you're looking for is different. It's so much different to the Enfield, and that's not necessarily better. I'm sure it's great. If you want to go fast, be a bit of a hooligan, chuck it about. But if you want to cruise around country lanes on a Sunday, you know, with your wife on her bike, you know, none of, you know, you know, not, not hooning it down some speed trap avoiding back street, then I think, you know, I think if you spent the extra money on this, the price difference between the Royal Enfield Interceptor and the Triumph Trident, I think if you spent that money on the Interceptor, I think it's going to be just as good a bike the average normal bike riding person and something with a bit of personality and something a bit different with a bit of character and it just makes you feel it makes you feel great and I am still smiling an hour later you know and I've been on this bike for a while now I'm not aching I've got no and I'll tell you the interesting thing about riding this bike is I've had no cramp in my hips and I think it's because the seat is narrow And you know, I love it. I think it's great. I think it's great. I don't know what else to say. Great, 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 great. Great Britain. Great British bike built in India. 
And the thing about it is, is you look at the switch gear. So you look at the switch gear and you think, do you know what? I really don't like that switch gear. Well then, change it. That's the thing. And, it, you know, you can change the switch gear. You can change the bars. You can change the suspension, the seat, the mirrors, and still have change in your pocket from the next, the next priced up bike in this bracket, you know? That's the thing, and it'll be exactly what you want. So rather than trying to find a bike that's got the switch gear that you want, that's two grand more expensive, put the switch gear that you want on this. It's not a hard job. It's a Royal Enfield, so you can do it in your garage yourself. No, I like it. Do you know what? I like it. I like this bike. And other strange noises. It's great. I don't know what else to say apart from this bike is great. You want to ride it all day. That's the thing is you want to ride it all day. I've got to take it back, but you want to ride it all day. I think, oh no, let's go down here. Let's go down here. Let's just get out and... What town centre is that then? I don't know where I am. Well, I kind of know where I am, but it's quite nice just bumbling around on this bike, not knowing where you are, just uh, seeing some new places, seeing some new things. Nod, nod. See sports bike riders? Nod. Old style riders? Nod. Harley riders? Nothing. It's terrible. Come on, Harley riders, get it together. I hope I'm going the right way. Hey, every way's the right way when you're on a Royal Enfield. How about that? Now, there's your there's there's your strap line, lads. There's your strap line for your new marketing campaign. Every way's the right way on a Royal Enfield. I should do that for a living. Glastonbury. All right. All these places you want to go to. Sun's out. Let's go there. Let's go there. No, let let let's let's go back. Oh bugger. Okay. Anyway. Does anybody know where I am? If you could text in, text in and tell me the way. Didn't I go? I went this way on the way out. Oh no. I think I went this way. <laughs> I went this way on the way out. I'm sure. Didn't I? Maybe not. Oh god. Right. So, this is what we do. Other route station. Oh no, that's good. Other routes, station, town centre. I should have gone past the cricket ground. Cricket ground, not cricket stadium. So, where I want to be is underneath this bridge. Bugger. Down there. That's where I want to be. So how'd you get down there? Can you go down here? Maybe you can. Oh, look at that. Genius. And they found him lying in a field, starved to death with his Royal Enfield. Oh, look at that. Jeez. I'm a genius. <laughs>